As the rest of the Missouri media starts to talk up Louisiana Tech for game week, what do I think of the Bulldogs? Well, let's talk about that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for making this show your first listen every day, and thanks for telling a friend to go to Locked on Mizzou to find us on YouTube and, of course, wherever you get your audio podcasts as well. And I can't help but notice this is the week when suddenly we start getting nervous about Louisiana Tech. Definitely the Missouri media is starting to talk up the Bulldogs as perhaps a dangerous opponent. But over at betonline.net, the Tigers are 19 and a half point favorites. Perhaps you think that's too much respect for Missouri. And you know what? Over the years, my father and I have attended over well over 100, maybe 200 Missouri games together at this point. Certainly if you throw in basketball, it's hundreds and hundreds at this point. But one thing my old man will always tell me is that first games can often be really weird. And you know what? Over the years, I want to actually I've learned a little bit from that and I want to parse that a little bit because often like in 2019 when the Tigers went to Laramie, Wyoming and unfortunately was upset in week one. If you're watching on YouTube, I use the highly cliche finger quotes there. Forgive me for that. But the point is, you can't really call that an upset in retrospect. Because while, yes, the Tigers were double-digit favorites heading into week one, and that result surprised a lot of people, including myself, the reality is that was a harbinger for a disappointing Missouri season. It wasn't a fluke at all. While Missouri did go on to win its next five games after that Wyoming game, including a really nice homecoming victory over the Ole Miss Rebels, the rest of that season was a complete and utter disaster, just like the Wyoming game had been. So not only that, think about just back to last season, right? Not only for Missouri, we'll get to some other teams here in a second, but if you think about the Tigers against Central Michigan last year, well, the Chippewas, their offensive line was able to push a relatively undersized Missouri front seven around for much of that football game, and especially that first half of the season, that's exactly what happened to Missouri over and over and over again. So yes, often That first game, while it can be surprising to us in the moment, it sure seems like, at least in recent years, more often than not, they're actually a harbinger of what's to come. If you think about Georgia and Clemson last year, I think a lot of people were surprised that Clemson could not move the ball whatsoever in week one. But guess what? Clemson's offense was not very good last season, to say the least, and Georgia's defense was historic. So again, I think we learn more about stuff that happens in week one than it is just a complete fluke. That sure seems to be at least the recent evidence in my mind. So the bottom line is I can't dismiss anybody who thinks maybe this Louisiana Tech game will be closer than the experts think. If you think that the Bulldogs are going to cover, I don't have any huge argument with you as of this moment. Here's what I do know. If, If Missouri does struggle against Louisiana Tech. Let's say they win the game by by four points or something. It's close into the fourth quarter. Missouri has to pull one out. That's probably not a good sign. Sure, the 2010 Tigers had a very famous last-second victory on the T.J. Moe miracle play against San Diego State, but more often than not, I think recent history definitely shows the opposite of that. Obviously, the 2010 Tigers would go on to defeat number one Oklahoma that year and have a really, really solid season. But you know what? Unfortunately, they'd lose to Nebraska, among other teams, and Texas Tech on the road in consecutive weeks. But hey, 
that actually allows me a nice natural transition here to talk a little bit more about Louisiana Tech and their offense. First year coach, Sonny Cumbie. You may, if you're a longtime college football fan like me, at least heading back 20 years or so, you may remember Sonny Cumbie as the starting quarterback for Texas Tech all the way back in the year 2004. Well, now here he is as a first-time head coach, at least as a, a true head coach. He was the interim coach for Texas Tech at one point, but now here he is with a true job at Louisiana Tech. And I've been a little bit surprised by the talk of how much mystery is maybe coming out of Louisiana Tech, at least on the offensive side of the ball. I think we should have a pretty good idea of what the Bulldogs are going to look like. If you watched Texas Tech last season, in fact, well, I'd say the offense will look fairly similar to that. If you've seen Mike Leach over the years, that's what it's going to look like. A lot of up-tempo, shotgun, short passes that are horizontal all over the field, occasional deep shots, a lot of passes to the running backs as well. And maybe the, the one thing that Cumbie has probably added to it a little bit more than uh, than Mike Leach traditionally has anyway. A little bit more of a quarterback run game in that offense, it would seem. Although I will say I'm not sure that Matthew Downing, the presumed starter here in week one for the Bulldogs, not sure he's much of a runner. Not a lot of evidence to support that anyway. Matthew Downing, a former walk-on with Georgia, transferred after one year to TCU, and in his lone start, all the way back in 2020, the first game of 2020. In fact, he was 11 of 21 for 158 yards, took four sacks in what ended up being a 37-34 loss to Iowa State. He was also replaced in the second half, and the, and the Horned Frogs nearly made a miraculous comeback. And that was it. Again, for Matthew Downey, he's made one start in his career. Not exactly a highly ranked guy out of high school or anything, considering he was a walk-on at Georgia. By the way, Sonny Cumbie, again, current coach for the Bulldogs. He was their def he was the TCU offensive coordinator, so he certainly knows what he's getting out of Matthew Downing. I've just got a question that if that's his best option at this point, I think this is a good chance for the Missouri defense to show up and, and hopefully prove that they're an improved unit. That's for darn sure. But there is one dangerous guy before Louisiana Tech that they'll have to worry about. Similar to a player for Central Michigan, in fact, last year, the Tigers actually held fairly well in check. But let's talk more about Louisiana Tech coming up and also comparing Eli Drinkwitz in one-score games to how Scott Frost at Nebraska has done so far. So we'll have some fun schadenfreude there at Nebraska's expense without question. But first, I do want to tell you about betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs this college football season. Of course, Missouri, again, like I said, favored by 19 and a half. They're still sitting at five and a half on their season win total. Still like the over there, especially since they're giving you a little juice. Plus 115, of course, that means you bet 10 bucks. You'll win 1150 if Missouri gets six wins or more. I think that's a solid bet. Why not put a few ducats on it? Why not? But regardless of what you're into, maybe it's the World Cup coming up. Maybe it's Major League Baseball, of course. Is in full swing. Regardless, head to bet online today where the game starts. Last season in the opener against Central Michigan, while the Missouri defense obviously was quite bad against the Central Michigan rushing attack, and again, just a, a bad harbinger of things to come, coming into the game, I thought Khalil Pimpleton for the Chippewas was a really dangerous player that Missouri had to worry about. And in that game, and I think you could give Chris Abrams Drain a lot of credit for this, again, Pimpleton, an explosive player lined up if not under an undersized and explosive player, I would say, who primarily would line up in the slot, run a lot of gadget plays, that type of thing. But Missouri held him to four receptions for 38 yards and, and just one yard on one attempt on the ground as well. So obviously Missouri focused on Pimpleton, I think. And I, again, I think you can give Chris Abrams drain some credit there because, well, 
maybe that was a harbinger of a positive season for him. He matched up against that guy a lot in the slot position in that game. So it will be interesting to see if Louisiana Tech against Missouri's slightly reconfigured defense if they'll be as effective stopping that type of player. Because to me, with adding a third safety instead of a nickel cornerback, essentially, which was what Chris Abrams Drain played last season, well, in theory, you should be a lot better in run support. In theory, Missouri should have an extra body at the line of scrimmage that should clean up a lot of things that were going on last season, let's hope. But on the other side of the equation, well, they're going to be trying to get this guy on guys like Martez Manuel, on guys like Chad Bailey and Tyron Hopper, linebackers and safeties. See if if you're if you're Louisiana Tech, certainly you're going to be trying to get those guys matched up on Smoke Harris. Again, a five foot seven guy, very elusive in space and short with short area quickness and all that good stuff. So if Missouri can handle that guy in the slot and you, again, use that extra star position for extra support in the running game. Should be a good sign for your defense for sure. And obviously a, a an important matchup that bears a lot of watching in week one. I've also seen some people on the Missouri beat point out that last season that, well, Louisiana Tech was actually better than its three and nine record, having having lost quite a few a close ball games, including one to Mississippi State. But I will just say that not all close games are created equally. So I, I would have to delve really, really deeply into those particular games to know if they're truly as close as the final score indicates. But I will just say that this Louisiana Tech squad is going to be quite a bit different than last year's regardless. A whole new coaching staff and also a team that's lost a fair bit of talent to the transfer portal as well. And you know what? Speaking of close games, well, it's the 25-year anniversary of the flea kicker. Yes, the 1997 Nebraska game where Scott Frost threw it over the middle to Matt Davison for one of the most bizarre plays, not only in college football history, but also sports history as well. But you know what? Missouri fans at least getting a, a somewhat of an emotional revenge, at least, over Scott Frost these days as, well, he won that close game, didn't he, all the way back in 97. But as a, as a coach, he is 5-21 and 21 in one-possession games. That is... Needlessly, needless to, needlessly to say, I can talk here eventually, that is astonishingly bad and probably, to be fair, quite a bit unlucky as well for Scott Frost. Now, if you're going to sit here and tell me, hey, he deserved to lose when he onside kicked it up 11 against Northwestern in Ireland this past Saturday, not going to argue with you there whatsoever. Certainly over time, as now Scott Frost has proven in a little over four seasons at Nebraska, my goodness, some of this has got to be his fault. But again, let's be real. Some of this is bad luck too. And the point really in bringing up Scott Frost and the Nebraska situation is not only to rub some salt in the wounds, which is of course part of this, but also just to show you what a big season this is for Missouri and Eli Drinkwitz and how easily perception can hinge on just a few plays. I mean, really, just a few snaps in one season can change the entire perception of your season, your program, and everything. Obviously, to put a fine point on it, an obvious point on it, if Scott Frost is 21-5 and five in those close games instead of 5-21, and 21, well, suddenly Nebraska fans, while they're not satisfied completely, are probably not calling for his head. He probably didn't have to restructure his contract in the previous offseason, let's put it that way. But you know what? Especially when you think about just how many games that's been, though. A little more than six per season on average. Nebraska is having one possession games in. Well, obviously part of that is they're no longer overwhelming people with talent, are they? But you know what? Let's get back to Missouri, of course. In 2020, under Eli Drinkwitz, Missouri 
was 3-0 and in one-score games. They were 2-2 two and two last season, so 5-2 and two overall. Imagine if those had flipped. Imagine if Missouri was 2-5 and five in one-score games. Or even better, what if they had beaten Boston College in Kentucky last year? But ah, there it is. Now we have to get back. We've got to really dig into this because, of again, not all one-score games are created equally. Because while last season Florida and Boston College clearly could have gone either way, if on the two-point conversion Missouri doesn't convert, how much different does last season feel? What about the end of the Boston College game? What if Missouri simply runs a draw play instead of throwing the ball up for grabs into the end zone? Or simply, what if Kiki Chisholm comes down with that pass? Again, the perception of last season is totally different. Also, 2020 as well. LSU, goal line stand. Arkansas, two-point victory, 50-48. to How easily could those things have gone either way? But on the other hand, again, last season... Missouri probably closer to Kentucky than it really deserved. On the other side, it also unnecessarily gave the Gamecocks a better chance to at least make it a ball game last season than its offense really deserved with a really careless turnover late. So again, I just think for the most part, no matter what happens this season, when it comes to the wins and losses, you almost have to stay the course with Eli Drinkwitz Unless you just see signs of actual incompetence, actual regression on the field in a whole bunch of other different ways. But if it just so happens that Missouri loses a close game to Florida, a close game to Kentucky, a close game to South Carolina, something like that, well, unfortunately, as tough of a pill as that might be to swallow, probably a sign that we should keep on going and stay the course. And coming up, let's finish out the program by talking a little college football business as the former commissioner of the Big Ten, Jim Delaney, a few years ago, made one of the great bets in sports business of all time. And it is paying off big time for the Big Ten. Let's talk about that coming up after these quick words. Now let's all think back to six years ago. Yes, the beginning of the Barry Odom era, but for these purposes, let's think about the media landscape at the time, especially in terms of streaming. I'm guessing most of you weren't cut cord cutters then. I know I still had my satellite package at the time through DirecTV, but a couple years ago, I cut the cord and now I stream all of my content. Some of it is though through DirecTV stream, in fact. So yes, While we're still paying a lot of the same companies we used to, well, certainly the structure has changed, your options have changed, and they can't just lock you into this giant bundle for seemingly years on end anymore. The world has changed quite a bit. Obviously, the proliferation of streaming services has been yet another big-time media rights bonanza for lots of people, especially, well, the Big Ten most recently. And you got to give Jim Delaney, their former commissioner, just a ton of credit because, again, back in 2016, well, the conventional wisdom pretty much went like this. You see, just a couple years prior, the SEC network had begun, the Big Ten network had begun around the same time, and there was this idea that, okay, while Missouri and Texas A&M, especially Missouri, quite frankly, and also Rutgers, Maryland being added to the Big Ten. A lot of that was about cable subscribers. Yeah, the bundle. Here we go. Even if you don't, in theory, hey, even if you don't watch the SEC network, well, by golly, if you live in Missouri, you're going to have it on your cable bundle anyway. So again, the conventional wisdom went that, oh, hey, cord cutting seems to be coming here in a few years. You know what that's going to do? Well, the value of these sports properties may have peaked. We're not going to get any better than this. Well, it turns out Jim Delaney thought that this was wrong. And that in fact, that this sort of coming streaming wars that he saw coming, see at the time there was Netflix, there was Amazon Prime that put out some shows like Skinny Pete, for instance. But 
not nearly what it is today. Now there's Peacock, there's Disney Plus, there's ESPN Plus, there's a bajillion others. So there's others who have come and sort of gone and failed already like CNN Plus. But the point is, again, Jim Delaney thought, aha, if I just, at a time when the ACC, for instance, was locked itself up for 20 years through 2036 with sort of an old style model with Disney and ESPN, well, Jim Delaney just decided to sign six-year contracts with Fox and also Disney slash ESPN. Then in 2022, they would have all of their content available at once. And boy, what a brilliant plan that was. Did that pay off or what? Because guess who wants content in 2022? Every single streaming provider. So unfortunately, if you don't want to watch things on Peacock, well, you better figure it out because the Mizzou-Illinois game just might be on Peacock a few years. All you Days of Our Lives fans out there like myself, you're going to have to figure out how to use Peacock too. So this is the new world, whether you like it or not. And Jim Delaney saw it coming. And frankly, my goodness, what what a what a what a bunch of what a great bit of foresight on his part. You got to give him a ton of credit because really the conventional wisdom is that it's not going to get any better f- for this in the once we get past the cable package and the satellite package, not going to get any better than this. Well, it turned out there was a lot of competition for streaming content and here we are. So, nice move by the Big 10. It's still going to be a while before the SEC can make a similar move. But hey, speaking of the Southeastern Conference, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen. Every day, Chris Gordy and the local experts of Locked On take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. So make Locked On SEC your second listen. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks again for listening to Locked on Mizzou.